Please remain standing while the members of the Madison Police Department Honor Guard present the flag and please join in the singing of our national anthem led by the DSU Concert Choir. Please be seated. As president of Dakota State University, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the fall 2011 commencement. Our December commencements are always special because it happens at a time of year that holds for most of us special memories and feelings. It is also special because this year in December, if some of you might have remembered, we actually had to postpone this event today because of a snowstorm, so we can all be very happy today with the weather as it is out there. It is also a time for families and friends to gather, and this commencement offers us another opportunity to be together. This occasion centers on a celebration, a special recognition of accomplishment and a pride in the effort persistence, and fortitude and commitment that have made it possible for these men and women to mark this special time in their lives. It is a time that is as much about beginnings as it is endings. DSU has been a university that knows how to reinvent itself. From its beginning as the first teacher education institution in the Dakota Territory in 1881, it has been a pioneer. Its more recent mission to lead in the inclusion of information technology 
in the education and workforce development of the state and the region has again labeled it a pioneer. DSU's expansion into graduate education at all levels and the development of significant research efforts in new fields like cybersecurity, health information technology, computer game design are pioneering efforts. There are a couple of new symbols today that are a part of our commencement ceremony for the first time. Our university mace in front of me here, a symbol of the authority of the university to carry out its mission and to seek wisdom and truth is a new mace. Just commissioned this year, it is made of cherry wood and it's topped by two antique bronze medallions embossed with the official seal of the university. The banners on display at the front of the hall to my left are also new and they symbolize the three colleges within our university and remind us of the unique programs and missions within each of these colleges. This is a dynamic and exciting place to get an education because we have never been hesitant or afraid to grasp onto that future, whatever it might be. I am confident that graduates, as the graduates of Dakota State University, you have developed some skills, attitudes, mindsets that will mimic our bring it on approach to this ever-changing world. A world that will challenge us to find new, even bolder approaches. I am a self-labeled information technology geek, zealot, and advocate because I believe that in the science of this information-driven world, we together will develop new approaches to solve many of the difficulties facing our society today. And I have an even stronger belief that our graduates and this amazing and special university will play a big part in that new era, that new world. It is all about beginnings not endings today. So congratulations for getting to this new point in your life. I know you will grasp onto the opportunity. I'm so pleased to have some very honored guests that are also very good friends of mine here on the stage with us today, including our Board of Regents representative, Regent Carol Pagonis, and a representative from our Alumni Association, Callie Walkenfoos. They will be more formally introduced later. So at this time, I am, and for many, many reasons, particularly pleased and honored to welcome our speaker today. Russell Olson was born and raised in Egan, South Dakota. He graduated from the University of South Dakota with a Bachelor of Science degree in both English and political science and a Master of Arts degree in public administration. After a short stint in the private sector, Russell worked for the South Dakota Eastern Council of Governments as a land use planner. He was then selected to work for the South Dakota Governor's Office of Economic Development. Next, he served as Executive Director for the Lake Erie Improvement Corporation, which serves as Madison's Office of Economic Development. Russell is currently employed as Manager of Community and Economic Development for Heartland Consumers Power District here in Madison. Russell served in the South Dakota House of Representatives from 2007 to 2008, and he currently serves as a senator for District 8. During the 2011 legislative session, he was elected by his colleagues, no small feat, to serve as the Senate Majority Leader for the Senate in the state of South Dakota. Russell and his wife Jenny live in Madison with their four children. Please join me in welcoming DSU's friend and our state senator, Senator Russ Olson. Thank you, Dr. Knowlton, uh, Regent Pagonis, um, faculty and staff, parents, and especially the graduates. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day today. Um, as Dr. Knowlton said, I serve as part of a citizen's legislature where the opposite of uh, Washington, D.C., 
we live at home and occasionally travel to Pier, where in Washington they live there and occasionally come home. So I think that, you know, the uh, burden of being a citizen legislature, legislator falls on my wife, Jenny, who works two jobs and raises our four children for the entire winter when I'm in Pier. So I wanted to introduce Jenny and, uh, and tell her how much she means to me. I appreciate all that you do for me. Technically, we're better. What an awesome centerpiece for DSU's new marketing effort. It's a bit arrogant, a little over-assuming, some would say. What a statement. Technically, we're better. Well, I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. I, um, because DSU is the uh, technology university for South Dakota, I wanted to center my remarks today on connectivity and our use of technology in both getting your first job and uh, what you do with the finances from the pay that you earn from it. I have to admit, I was a little offended when Dr. Knowlton, through an email, asked me to be your speaker today. After all, I'm not nearly old enough to give a commencement address. So I thought, and then I got to thinking about, you know, what I would want to talk about, and I thought about some of the, the uh, changes that Dr. Knowlton has made to this campus, and, and uh, it really has a, a, a new breath of fresh air that uh, he's brought, you know, technology to every corner of your campus. Uh, the aesthetics and the, and the grounds are just welcoming. And uh, then when I was looking, doing this mental tour of your university, I thought, yeah, there's uh, the Gerald Thunheim Technology Center. I know that guy. He's a friend of mine. Jenny and I get vegetables from him every Wednesday out of his uh, two-acre garden that he grows for a garden club and then takes the revenue from that and uh, donates it back to scholarships for uh, university athletes. So I was like, yeah, I know somebody that's a uh, building's named after him. And then you think about the Dale Kringen Alumni and Foundation Center. Dale was a personal friend of mine and uh, mentor for most of my adult life. And so there's another guy that I'm friends with that has a building named after him. So I got to thinking, well, after all, maybe I am old enough to give this. If you can be personal friends with people that they have the buildings named after, you've been around long enough to uh, give a commencement address. I remember my college graduation, the nervous and impatient angst of the freedom that you're about to have. But I don't remember in either my undergraduate or my graduate ceremonies who spoke, who delivered that message. Some people assume that politicians have colossal egos, and that may be the case. So I was thinking on behalf of my ego, how would I get these graduates to remember me? What can I do to have at least one of these people remember me? Well, one of them, except for Alex Delzer, because I've known her since she was in the sixth grade, so I hope Alex remembers five years from now that I'm, I'm the guy that gave her a commencement address. But what else can I do I, to, to make somebody of, of our graduates remember me? I, I, I don't feel that what I'm going to talk about today is such a moving or inspirational speech that it'll change your life. I also don't have a magic wand that I can wave for those of you that haven't already found gainful employment that you'll land that dream job right off the bat. So I broke it down into trying to find a way that just one of you would remember me. So I thought, Hmm, maybe I'll punk Dr. Knowlton, and I'll have his cell phone number put on the jumbotron here, and uh, <laughs> that'd make people remember me. But he's beat me to the punch because his cell phone number's on his welcome page on DSU's website. Not only are you the most connected university in South Dakota, you have a president that actually wants to be connected to you. He puts his cell number seriously on his website. Um, you know, anybody with Twitter or Facebook or, or texting can, can send him a call or send him a message anytime, day or night. So it says a lot about Dr. Knowlton that he truly wants to be in touch with that connectivity with his students, either that or he's a hopeless insomniac that doesn't mind late night phone calls. Because I can tell you this, 20 years ago when I was at a university a little further south than DSU, uh, he would have got phone calls every night between two and four o'clock in the morning. So that connectivity that I talked about, I have a feeling 
that as a, that as a matter of fact that right now as I am up here, some of our graduates have out their smartphones or their cell phones or their iPods and they're updating their Facebook status to almost graduated or God would Russ just get done talking so we can move on with the party. But I, I wanted to test that and so I actually, um, Dr. Knowlton's number still up there? If you could put that up there again. I've got, uh, I thought, how would else would you touch out to reach out and have a, somebody remember you? Cash. I got 20 bucks for the first person that's graduating that can text Dr. Knowlton your name. I know you got your cell phones with you. I know somebody's got it that's graduating that can send Dr. Knowlton your name and it's good for 20 bucks. I mean, this is probably the highest salary you'll ever get because it'll take less than 30 seconds to do it and that's 20 bucks. So he's got his phone, we're waiting. We don't get to move on until somebody texts him your name that's graduating today. Anything? I hope I didn't underestimate you. Sure. We got one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phil Carmody. Phil. Phil Carmody. We got. Actually, they're coming like crazy now, including faculty. Or yeah, I was going to say that the second one he just got it was from Dr. Baker, and no, it's just for the graduates. So that way, Phil, hopefully five years from now, and believe me, I didn't post date the check five years, so you had to remember me five years from now. But I just knew that that would be one way to touch you with some cash, get your get your college uh, debt paid off a little bit sooner that way. You know, um, they've. Technology has come a long way since I was a student. Uh, you know, it was 20 years ago, and believe me, it flies by. But 20 years ago, I graduated from high school at Egan with 15 other kids. And so in 1988, I started down at the University of South Dakota. That was the same year that um, Internet really started to, to gain some um, first commercial use. And in 18, or 1989, CompuServe mail system was introduced to the Ohio State University network. 1993, AOL launched its internet system which connected us to the global world. When I started school, we still wrote letters back home. You know, I was kind of a Ronnie Runholm. I was the first person to go to USD from my hometown of Egan in 17 years. And so I didn't have a big base of friends uh, down at the university. So I, every Friday, I'd pack up my stuff and head home because, you know, I was the first guy in 17 years to go to the youth. So I was that guy. You know, it was pretty cool, or so I thought. And I had a high school girlfriend, so we would, you know, see each other on the weekends. On Monday, write each other a letter. Hopefully, they exchanged paths in the middle of some freight system on the U.S. Postal Service and by Thursday you'd be checking your mailbox because you wanted that letter. Well that went on for the first few months of uh, my first semester and then that Thursday no letter. So I get in the car Friday, drive home just thinking that she got busy with basketball or something and uh, forgot to pen me a letter. I get home Friday, found out we broke up Tuesday. And uh, so as embarrassing as that was for me to find out that I drove all the way back from Vermilion to see my high school girlfriend and she broke up with me Tuesday, I kind of relate that to now. You guys have Facebook and how embarrassing it might be today to have all of your buddies or your girlfriends, your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, and even grandma and grandpa find out that you just got dumped and everybody knows it before you. So it was kind of the same thing. With technology nowadays, it isn't that much easier for you guys. Um, The technology that we all enjoy and makes our lives better also has some teeth to it. For those of you graduating today, uh, you need to keep in mind that you know all the photos and the stories and the comments that you put on your Facebook page uh, could come back and have an adverse effect on your uh, career. The, the same stories that you post on your Facebook could come back and hurt the old checkbook. For instance, and I'm thinking about uh, employers like myself, you know, your, your future employers are creeping you. Believe me, they're, when you, before you go into that interview, we've uh, 
taken a look at your Facebook. We've not only looked at your academic career, but we've had people creep you. And in my case, I don't know how, so I hired somebody that was under 25 from DSU with a degree to check out on my employees. Not, not all the employees, I got a couple examples here, not all these are, are people that I've interviewed, but um, you may want to check that Facebook and check anything else that you posted online because employers are looking at that and they could come back to haunt you. So uh, if you can pol produce the police report that shows that your shirt actually was stolen at the Sturgis motorcycle rally, you might have a shot in that interview to convince that uh, future employer that that was an honest mistake. If you're really believable, you may be able to convince that potential employer that you were at a, ha a Halloween costume party dressed as either Michael Phelps or Miley Cyrus and that three foot bong was a prop. <laughs> it can come back, I'm being facetious, but the things that you post now can come back and, and by yeah, I've actually interviewed one guy and, and I, I won't say his name, but he's a DSU guy and we, we ultimately hired him, but some of the stuff on his Facebook page made me a little bit jealous that he had so much fun, but the fact that he had put it out there for everybody to see, I said, wasn't the smartest move in the world. If this was for a $60,000 a year job versus a $8 an hour internship, you, you might want to have that reconsidered. Um, the other part of what I wanted to talk about today was how technology and connectivity to our financial industries can affect your life once you do get that job and you start having some income that you can pay your bills. Um, we have a Master's of Science in Information Assurance. Is anybody graduating with that today? Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you know, Department of Defense tells us that you know we can expect sometime in the near future a terrorist attack on our financial systems based on infiltrating our financial systems IT networks and uh, causing a lot of trouble, a lot more trouble than, uh, than their tactics that are tr are, aren't working overseas. So thank you for, for uh, helping our country out in that, uh, in that uh, degree. Every one of you can use technology to access your bank accounts. You can check your uh, online checking account and find out exactly how much money that you either have or don't have each hour of the day. So what, I'm, what, I, what I'd like to tell you is something that was never given to me as a message when I was sitting in your chairs, and that is pay yourselves, pay your bills, don't pay a credit card company. I have nothing against our credit card industry, and they're one of the largest employers in our great state. But if you use properly, they're a great tool. If you allow yourself to get into debt right away before the real money starts to come in, you spend the rest of the next 20 years paying it off. Frankly, you know, if you have a credit card bill that you've ran up, you, you only pay the finance charges and the fees associated with it, and you really never get to the principal. But ultimately what happens time and time again is you add to the debt. And so it hurts your credit in the long run, and when you go to buy your first house, you're gonna pay a higher interest rate than the rest of the people that were financially responsible. So that's my only lecture. Um, pay your bills. Don't buy things that you don't need, because if it turns out if you have to put it on a credit card, you probably don't need it. Um, invest wisely. Invest in South Dakota companies. South Dakota is a great state to work, raise your families, and to do business. I get the pleasure of serving on a, uh, a uh, South Dakota Development Corporation. We issue loans to small businesses, and we've had small businesses in South Dakota that have actually went out of business. Their business model didn't work. They didn't plan properly. However, they continue to pay the debt service on those loans, even though their business is no longer in operation. It says a lot about the, the character of South Dakotans, and you're all part of that now. As graduates from South Dakota's Technology University, I want to thank you for helping make South Dakota better and encourage you to stick around. South Dakota, like I said, is a great place to raise your families. I started out this address with the new marketing slogan for DSU. Technically, we're better. But that just isn't true. Technically, you're the best. Thank you for letting me be part of your day. Say a prayer for our men and women in, that are protecting our country, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Senator Olson, for agreeing to share those thoughts with our graduates and families. He didn't mention that at one point a few graduations ago, 
um, he was trying to get a message to me, and I had my cell phone in my uh, robe, and I couldn't get to it, and it kept buzzing throughout the time I was making his welcoming comments. But there was a thought, I'll bet that's Russ on the phone. So, I am extremely pleased to introduce the DSU Concert Choir under the direction of Miss Sandy Champion to perform the piece titled Unwritten. Sometimes my tries are outside the lines. We think conditions might make mistakes, but I can live that way. Staring at the blank page before you, open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find, reaching for something in the distance. Close, you can almost taste it. Release your inhibitions, feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you, only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Get yourself in words unspoken, give your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. Rain on your skin, no one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Teach yourself in words unspoken. Live your life with thoughts wide open. Today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Thank you to the concert choir for their musical selection. I'm Cecilia Whitmire. I'm the Vice President of Academ Academic Affairs. I'm having trouble with the mic. Um, it's my pleasure to call upon a member of the graduating class, Amy Jo Feniger, to speak to us on behalf of the graduates. Amy, please come forward. Amy is originally from Champlin, Minnesota. She's an honors graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Education degree in Physical Education. As a student, Amy has worked as a student ambassador, a tutor, and English as a second language instructor, and she's also assisted in the diversity office. She participated in both volleyball and track. She was an active member of several uh, organizations on campus, including founding president of the DSU Physical Education Club. She was elected to the board of the South Dakota Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance and she's a member of that same organization at the national level. She has received academic and athletic honors. 
including the Ruth Abernathy Presidential Scholarship. And uh, her future plans include a master's degree in counseling and human resource development. And she's been awarded an, a graduate assistantship with the Multicultural Office at SDSU as she starts that career almost immediately. And please welcome Amy Finneger. Thanks. Good morning. On behalf of Dakota State University's graduating class of 2011, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our loving family, friends, faculty, and staff who have joined us here today. What an honor it is to be standing in front of you this morning. To be honest, I spent a significant amount of time agonizing over this speech. After spending a lot of time procrastinating, I did as any good college student would do. I resorted to Google. According to what I read, most college commencement speeches consist of bad jokes and bland advice and are more meaningful if the speaker, excuse me, if the speaker talks about themselves. I'll spare you the jokes, keep the advice to a minimum, and tell you a little bit about my experiences. I came to DSU in the fall of 2007 as a traditional undergraduate student. DSU is my college of choice mostly because I wanted to go to college to play volleyball. Being a student and becoming a professional were not exactly at the top of my list four and a half years ago. I came here simply as an athlete, not seeking much more than playing time on the court. I was fairly unhappy my first year and a half of college. I was experiencing culture shock, I had a rotten attitude, and at that point I didn't see all the opportunity that was right in front of me. Eventually, I got tired of complaining and made some changes. I removed some of the factors that were negatively influencing my life and began getting more involved academically. I became a board member on the state association in my field of study. I started joining various clubs on campus and began attending national professional conventions. The more I got involved and took hold of the opportunities available to me, the more I realized that DSU was, in fact, a great place to be. Since I've been at DSU, I've been blessed with opportunities to fill leadership roles, travel to conferences, and speak in front of large groups of people. I never expected to do any of those things. One of my mentors here frequently told me, bloom where you're planted. Four and a half years ago, that meant nothing. But now I understand. No matter where you end up in life, whether it be a small town surrounded by agricultural land, or a remote island on the other side of the world, do the best with the situation that you're given. Bloom where you're planted. That, fellow graduates, is my advice to you. No matter where you end up after today, do your best. Be proud of what you accomplish. Whether it be a full-time career in your field or a temporary job to pay the bills, blossom and grow. Make the best of the situation you are in, because you never know where you could go from there. Congratulations, class of 2011 and best of luck with whatever comes next. Thank you, Amy. The quality of education on any campus depends on the faculty. Dakota State University is and has been particularly blessed to have a faculty who are widely recognized for their innovation, and their willingness to take on new challenges. They are also a faculty who care deeply about their students and the quality of education they experience. Normally I um, uh, have them all stand up at one time, but because of certain, uh, uh, I suppose, privileges I have today, I'm going to ask each of them to stand as I call their names, and please remain standing. Uh, we will recognize them all together. Lynette Goldstead Mortar, Mortar, <laughs> then I got to mess the first one up. That didn't work very well. <laughs> Lynette Molstead Gorder, Risa Smith, Dale Drogi, Dan Talley, Sue Conover, Scott McKenzie, John Nelson, Christelle Baker, Rick Pitts, Jeff Palmer, Donna Hazelwood, Rich Avery, Mark Hawks, Doreen Bennett, 
Don Wyken, Ron Shah, Robert Jackson, Stephen Krebsbach, Glenn Berman, Wayne Pauli, Joe Staudenbauer, Justin Blessinger, Steve Graham, Jennifer Nash, Gail Wido, Tom Jones, Dan Weinstein, Bill Fig, David Peake, Kevin Streff, Maureen Murphy, Josh Pauli, Jack Walters, Kurt Kemper, Jim McEwen, Joyce Havlick, Mark Moran, Andrew Shires, Sri Malati, Vicki Johnson, Pat Engebretson, Surendra Sarnikar, and Chris, you'll have to tweet this because I know I'm going to ask you to stand and he's going to make fun of me. Chris Olson, wave, Chris. Dan Mortensen, Gabe Midland, Deb Tech, Brad Hesser, Mark Geary, Barbara, and I'm going to do this right, Zerbinska, Mary Francis, Lynn Nelson, Jeffrey Howard, Sherry Noteboom, Michael Tu, Linda Parks, Scott Steger, Yinlings Chang, Dina Huners Nelson, Scott Richardson, Zheng Chen, Stacy Berry, Heather, Heather Rissler, Giles Timms, Carmela Lanza, Brent Tullis, Derek Franken, Kathy Engbrett, Kelly McLeod, Tom Nielsen, Kyle Cronin, Naveen Noir, Kim Jones, Rob Hanemichael, Amanda Short Swartz, Carla Miller. Did I miss anybody? Oh, I did. <laughs> and the most important, because she's at the list, she has no number. It just says Mace, Vicki Sterling. Thank you, all faculty members at this university. My other choice was to have you all walk across the stage, so you can be thankful I varied that a little bit. Degrees are authorized by the South Dakota Board of Regents. We are pleased that Regent Carol Pagonis, a very special friend and quite honestly an amazing woman from Sioux Falls, was able to join us to authorize these degrees. Regent Pagonis. The faculty of Dakota State University have determined that these candidates comprising the 128th graduating class have or will complete all requirements for the degrees indicated. I am pleased to concur in the recommendation of this faculty and present these candidates to the Board of Regents for the awarding of degrees. I, without a doubt, am old enough to be here as speaker. Let me tell you. President Knowlton, Senator Olson, graduates, family and friends of graduates, and Dakota State University family. Graduates, did you know that you are graduating from one of the most unique and recognized universities in the entire nation? This year alone, DSU received the College and University Professional Association Human Service Award. The online business school ranked 21 out of the top 136 performers in the nation. The computer science master's at DSU was ranked number five in the nation, and DSU's master's in information was ranked 10. The bachelor's degree for health professionals was ranked number seven. The National Science Foundation awarded DSU a $400,000 research grant and a $1.3 million scholarship grant. Wow. Here we are in a small town, small university, small state, but at one of the very best universities in the nation. Be proud, folks, be proud. All of these awards and recognitions came under the leadership of President Knowlton. I like to call him the president who dared. I was on the selection committee. When he came here, he said that he would recruit and retain the finest faculty available in the entire US. He did. He said he would upgrade the physical structure of the campus. He did. And he insisted that DSU have the horses and the capabilities 
to handle a doctoral program, and they have. And now he's leaving us. But instead of this being a sad state of affairs, we all know what Dakota State University has to offer the next chief executive officer, a solid institution, a unique mission, a great faculty, and a beautiful campus. With that, by the power vested in the Board of Regents, by the state constitution, I hereby authorize President Knowlton to award degrees. I now call upon several individuals to assist me with the awarding of diplomas. I ask that these persons rise and be recognized. Please hold your applause. Dr. Cecilia Whitmire, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Omar Al-Gayar, Dean of the Graduate Studies and Research. Dr. Kerry Forbes Boyd, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Tom Halverson, Dean, College of Business and Information Systems. Dr. Judy Dittman, Dean, College of Education. Dr. Mark Hawks, Graduate Program Coordinator for the College of Education. Ms. Sandy Anderson, Registrar. Ms. Jennifer Meese, Graduate Programs Assistant. And Student Marshals David Miller and Juan Valdez. The Registrar and Graduate Programs Assistant will please bring the graduates forward to receive their diplomas. Will the candidates for the Master of Science and Master of Science in Educa Education degrees please rise and come forward? In the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science in Information Assurance, Adam Duane Jensen. Eric Emerson Seeger. In the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science in Information Systems, J. Clark Anibal. Venkata Gubala. Marilyn Halverson. Prasuna Krishnamurthy. Santosh Kumar Lakaraju. H. Larson. Mahendra Nanad Mane.
College of Education, Master of Science in Education and Educational Technology, Tamara Jo Block. Max Hodgen. Shannon Marie Palmland. Darren Lee Swenson. Baccalaureate degrees from Dakota State University, please rise and come forward by row. For the College of Arts and Sciences, Laura Bartek. Kristen Cooper. Trent Donald Lutmer. Elizabeth Hian Nuss. Courtney Elizabeth Schlimgen. Jared Slobom, magna cum laude. Q Tang. Mitchell Arvid Williams. For the College of Business and Information Systems, Lee da Daniel Bennett. Melissa Cavagelli. Katie M. Daling. Alex Delzer. Miguel Farfan. Sarah Ann Franken. Jared M. Gray. Matt Heilman, magna cum laude. Justin Michael Hubrock, Center of Excellence graduate, cum laude. Jennifer K., Center of Excellence graduate, magna cum laude. Nadine Bess Kepford.
Adam Mark Clindworth, Center of Excellence graduate, magna cum laude. Daniel Ray Mann. Krista Ann Park. Chris Peterson, magna cum laude. Colin Schindler. Courtney A. Slate. Susan Soderbloom. Kyle J. Stensland. Audra Eileen Swanson. Jeff Tabert. Cheryl A. Unterbrunner, magna cum laude. Brock Whitrock, cum laude. Daniel C. Woodraska, magna cum laude. For the College of Education, Gabriella L. Allers. Philip M. Carmody. Tyler Johnson Liesinger. Jonathan Edward O'Connor. Amy Joy Feniger, magna cum laude. Ashley Place. Kelsey Lee Sandman. Laura E. Shan Shanafelt. <laughs> Melissa Marie Scaff. <laughs> Melissa Ann Van Dyke, Center of Excellence graduate, summa cum laude. Delon E. Van Reagan Motor. Magna cum laude. For the College of Interdisciplinary Majors, Flo Duchesne. Russell Dean Simmons. the candidates for the associate degrees from Dakota State University please rise and come forward. For the College of Business and Information Systems, Marisa E. Draper with highest honor. Karina J. Erickson with honor. Thomas Christopher Haugard.
Will all the graduates please rise? By the authority vested in me by the South Dakota Board of Regents, I hereby confer upon each of you the degrees to which you are entitled with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. You may move your tassels. Please be seated. <laughs> Members of the Dakota State University fall graduating class, we are proud of your accomplishments. I invite the parents, families, friends, and members of the faculty and honored guests to join me once more in applauding your amazing success. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to call Callie Walkenfuss, who is a local realtor and manager of the Lakes Resort, to the podium. Callie serves on the board of directors of the Dakota State University Alumni Association and will welcome our graduates as alumni of the university. Dr. Knowlton. Regent Pagonis, Senator Olson, family, friends, and primarily you graduates. On behalf of the Dakota State University Alumni Association, I am incredibly honored to be here today to share this amazing stepping stone in your life. As a mentor takes on an apprentice to advise, mold, train, and pass his skills on to, we, as Dakota State University alumni, wish to pass to you, the graduating class of 2011, a toolkit for success. Through our experiences, our victories, and defeats, we have learned along the way that there are cl clearly tools that will help you get through your life and career. The hammer represents perseverance. Keep hammering at your goals and never give up on your dreams. Dare to be significant. The pliers represents passion. Harvey McKay said it best, love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. Like the pliers wraps its claws around an object, so too can you wrap your arms around your future. Love it, live it, and believe in it. The saw represents the things that you should cut out of your lives, like fear of failure, negative people, and bad attitudes. The level represents the balance that we need in our lives between career, family, and other organizations that you choose to be a part of. The bungee represents your alma mater, Dakota State University. Stay connected to us. Give back. Lean on us for direction. That's what we're here for. We cannot wait to see you succeed. You've received a great education from one of the best universities in the Midwest. Brag about it, because technically, we're better or best, as Senator Olson would say. Congratulations, graduates. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Dakota State University, I thank you for attending this fall commencement at Dakota State University. My congratulations to the graduates on your accomplishments and my best wishes on your plans for the future. We invite you all to uh, join your graduate and the faculty at the Coda Prairie Playhouse, which is directly across the street for punch, coffee, and cake in recognition of today's graduates. Graduates of DSU, you have joined the thousands of DSU alumni who have crossed this stage before you. Many of those alumni are in the audience today in support of you and your accomplishments. I ask any DSU alumni who are present with us today 
to please stand to be recognized and remain standing. Any of alumni of DSU, please stand. Let's give them a round of applause. Please remain standing. And I would now ask our graduates and the newest alumni of DSU to stand and join them. And now for my last time, I conclude this commencement and ask that the entire audience rise for the singing of the alma mater led by the DSU Concert Choir. The words to the alma mater are found on the back cover of your program. Sweet. 